quick tutorial showing you how to convert text to shape, how to accomplish any of these effects on the left hand side. So the first thing you need to do is go to your text tool and create a text box. Type in your text. Key thing to keep in mind is you need to make sure your text is spelled correctly. Because once converted to a shape, you can no longer edit your text. The second thing is to make sure you're using the right font that you want to use. Because once converted to a shape, you can no longer change the font either. So I'm going to do enamel brush, made sure YBK is spelled correctly. And then I'm going to change my font size to at least 24 point font or bigger. If you do not do that, when you come over to object, convert text to shape, you will get an error message. Once you increase that to 24 point font or bigger, you will no longer get that error message. Another thing to keep in mind is, it, however your text looks, that is how it will appear. So for instance, if I did yearbook, yearbook this way, or if I did yearbook, yearbook stacked, I'm gonna increase this font size. And then once I come over here to object convert text to shape, that is, whoops, I meant to cap one of these as we do. Let me extend this text box. And now let's do that. There we go. Once I convert text to shape, it will stay like that. So if you keep everything in one line, it's going to stay in one line. If you have it stacked, it's going to stay stacked. So my general recommendation with this is to always separate each word. That way you can stack them and play around with them. Or in this situation, I did LIF and then I separated the E so I can play around with the E. So always keep all your words separate. And then if you want to do anything special like this, separate that letter. So converted this to shape. First thing I want to do is drop a photo. So come in my photo tray and drop in that photo. There we go. Photo has been placed and just like any other shape, you can now double click and then reposition that photo. So as you can see here, there's one I did something a little special. So I'm going to copy this. You'll notice I'll do using a lot of shortcuts. So one shortcut I love is Command C, Control C for copy, then Control V, Command V for paste. So it just depends on if you're on a Mac computer, it's Command. If you're on a Windows computer, it's Control. So what I did here was I edit the path. So if I come over to object, you have edit path. However, it's going to be grayed out once you drop in a photo. So you actually have to do that beforehand. So I removed my photo, went to edit path, and now I can remove this inside part. And there we go. It's going to get a little weird, and that is okay. You're doing okay. As long as you remove the dots, hit save, everything comes back. So there we go. Come down to my photo tray and now I can drop that in and now you can actually see his face through the B. So you can drop a photo or edit the path and drop a photo. Next thing I want to do is kind of an outline. So I did the outline with this one so we'll just do the same thing. So bring that one over, copy paste it. I'm going to remove my photo because I no longer want the photo. I'm going to fill color. Don't fill with white, fill with no color. The reason I say don't fill with white is because now if I did fill with white, when I move this around on top of things, you won't get that effect of being able to stack them properly. Versus if I leave that there real quick and remove color, now I can stack on top of each other, which leads to this next one. So I'm going to for this next one, I'm going to just do the original classic logo. So remove photo, fill it with whatever color I want. And what I'm going to do is copy this and paste it so I have a duplicate version. And with this version, I will remove the fill and then add a border. And now I can stack it on top and play around. Or I can right click, send to back, have it go to the back. So these are now two different objects, an outline object and then a fill object. Again, there's no fill color in this. Because if I move this one, if I add a fill and then move this to front now, it's not going to create that same effect. But that is a slightly different effect. So there we go. But you can accomplish the same look that I'm doing here by instead 
adding a shadow. So if I come over here with this one, I can go to effects, shadow, and do that same thing. So offset to we'll do like eight or six. Six might work. Do 100%, and then I can change the direction. And there you go. So that's where you would fill with white, because if I remove the fill color now, it'll be see-through on both ends. So fill with white, and you can do that, or fill with any color. It doesn't have to be white. I just chose white for that example. But I did this same effect without having to do two. So it depends on what you're trying to do here. So in this situation, I just wanted a border in the background. And so that's why I have two separate objects. There we go. Because, going to the shadow, if I wanted to do this as a shadow, you can't, because your shadow's gonna be filled in with a color, it's not gonna be an outline. So now I can add my shadow if I just want a regular shadow. And again, you can offset this any number, so even if the number's not there, type in. Same thing with opacity, you can type in any opacity you want as well. And you can also adjust the angles here, or you can move it and adjust that way as well. So whichever one you prefer. This one's a little trick I like to do. So taking this same one, I'm gonna fill this first. So when using a border, so I have this and I wanna add the border on top of my fill. So I add a border. As you increase your border weight, so again, go to object, border, increase it, your border goes inside your text and outside. So a trick I use is, I'm gonna remove my fill. And actually, what I would do is fill the color with the same color I'm doing my border. I'm gonna edit, copy, edit, paste in place. And now I have two on top of each other. With the top one, I'm gonna remove my border color and then choose my fill color. And now you'll see that the border only goes to the outside. Again, let me show you how that looks. So let's remove that. Bring that one back in. Let's do a border pink. And let's see what the border size was on here. So that's eight. So that's what that looks like. So I can also lock this in place and go a lot thicker. Let's say I want a thicker border. Let's say I want to go up to. 20. Now that's only going to the outside versus if I did 20 here, it's going outside inside. And so that's how you can accomplish kind of this like thicker color on your tags. I'll be using border by separating the two. So you have your top. So if I come back to unlock, you have your top fill color. And then you have your top border color. So with my border now, another thing you can do is you can remove points. So I'm gonna edit path because let's say I want to keep that as pink. Same thing over here. Let's say I still wanna keep the pink in there. What I could do is actually move this point a little more inward. Same thing here, I think it was around this area was not filling in. save there we go now it filled it in completely like a sticker or the other option is you can always come to a shape and put it in as well so put in the shape and fill it in that way the only reason I don't do the shape is because now that's another object I'm playing with versus just keeping it with two objects so if I undo undo go back here I accidentally undid too much. Come back here. I can either right click edit path as well or just come back here to edit path. So let's do that little trick I did again. Bring it back like right around there. That should do be enough. Let's do probably right there should be enough as well. And there we go. So that's what I like to do, and then what I would do is then group this. So Command-G to group, 
or control G if you're on a Windows. And so I'll make sure I grab both pieces. Did I grab both? No. Oh, that one's locked. Unlock all. Now I'll grab both and now they can move in unison as well as when I'm making them bigger and smaller, they go in unison. And another thing to keep in mind is if you hold down your shift key, that's how you keep everything in proportion. So I showed you kind of how to do this kind of sticker, outer border look. You have this shadow with fill, you have an outline and fill only, how to edit path if you want to remove parts of a shape or keep your shape the same. Also how to add a drop shadow. And the last one I'll show is gradient. So I'm just gonna ungroup this again, take my regular fill color, and instead of doing a fill, I can come over to effects and do gradient. So check off that little gradient tool, and that will now allow me to add gradients. And so you can add your gradient color, you can change your direction of your gradient. If you wanna do something like that, all you do is change this color to whatever color the background is, so it kind of looks like it's fading into the background. So if my background was red, I would pick a red. If it's black, pick that black. So just choosing that color to be whatever color your background is will create that kind of look of that it's fading into your background. And there we go. And then this part is if you have a shape and you want to kind of want to extend it. So all I did was I took these points and then dragged them down and extended them. So I did the same thing on this side, and then the reason I did that was I kind of wanted this to bleed off the page. So that's what the original shape looked like, and then this was my modified shape. So that's how you convert text to shape. If you have any questions, let me know.